What is up, everybody? This is Jeff, and this is where you get your GIS chops. Have you ever wondered what the differences between planar and geodesic measurements were and which one you should use in your analysis? I'm going to give you a short answer to that question and some resources to dive deeper. So here's the short answer. Planar measurements are on a plane. Or you remember in high school when you, had, you were given a, a graph and you were given coordinates to one point and another point and you had to figure out the distance of a line between those two points. It's like that. You're measuring the distance between two points on a flat surface, whereas geodesic measurements are measurements on a surface. I like to think of it as a contact lens sitting on a countertop. You dropped your contact lens and it's sitting there on top of the countertop, not like a bowl like this, but domed like this. Planar measurements are the distance between the edge of the contact lens to the other edge, whereas geodesic measurements are measured along the dome or the surface of the contact lens. That's how I think of it. So geodesic measurements are going to be slightly longer than your planar measurements. The longer the distance between your two points, that's going to increase because there's more surface in between those two points. Now, which one should you use for your analysis? That depends on how distributed your data is and which coordinate system you're using. If your data spans a couple UTM zones, you might want to think of using geodesic. Or if you're using a geographic coordinate system, geodesic may be your best bet. If your data doesn't span a large area, it's within one UTM zone or a small county and you're using a projected coordinate system, planar is probably good enough. To demonstrate the differences and the possible distortions you could experience while buffering things using the different methods. I've got some points here all throughout the globe. Of course, I had to put one here at Null Island. The blue circles are buffers using the planar method. The yellow circles are buffers using the geodesic method. Looking at it this way, you might think those geodesic buffers aren't any good, that they're too distorted. But it's actually the opposite. If we look at this on a scene on a globe, you can see the colors are the same. The one at the Null Island, they're fairly identical. They're pretty close. But when we get up in here into Greenland and up in Finland, it's the planar buffers that are distorted. That's because the planar method used the flat surface. And in this other map, we're looking at it in a, on a flat surface. In the scene, those yellow circles are contact lenses sitting on top of a geoid instead of a flat circle cutting through the globe. So those buffers are 500 mile buffers. The planar ones look good on a flat map, but then the opposite is true on the globe. If you want more details about these measurement methods, there's a couple more in the measurement tool. I've put a few links down in the description that you can look into. I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to give this video a like. Chop that like button for me. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Share with your family, friends, cousins, neighbors. I'd appreciate it. Be nice out there. We'll see you next time.